Touch the triune God to enjoy the Father, the Son, and the Spirit as our real blessing. When we touch the triune God, we enjoy the Father, the Son, and the Spirit as our real blessing. The Father blesses us and keeps us, the Son shines on us and is gracious to us, and the Holy Spirit lifts up His countenance upon us and gives us peace. The real blessing is the triune God dispensing Himself and His divine Trinity into us. Hallelujah! We believers in Christ are blessed people, for we have the triune God and His divine Trinity dispensing all that He is into us for our enjoyment and our supply so that we may partake of Him, live Him, and be His corporate expression on earth. If we look at ourselves and check our situation, we will realize that many times we are like Jacob, struggling with God, wrestling with Him, and seeking to obtain the blessing. It is okay to struggle with the Lord, and it is not a problem when we wrestle with Him, for He is eager to bless us, even though we still struggle with Him. He will have a way to touch our natural strength and cause us to limp, that is, to no longer trust in ourselves but in Him, the One who is our life and life supply. He wants to transform us from a supplanter, one who wants to always gain something from others, to a prince of God, one who walks with God and who blesses all those around them with God as their blessing. When the Lord touches our natural strength and we are defeated by Him, in our fellowship and conversation with Him, we receive His blessing, in such experiences, we experience the very face of God. Hallelujah! And here, in the face of God, in our fellowship with Him through all our failures and defeats and victories, we can partake of Him as the very face bread, exo. 2530. The showbread table in the tabernacle is literally the bread of the face, the bread of the face of God which we enjoy for our serving supply. When we have the Lord's smile, we enjoy the serving supply. May we learn to spend time with the Lord and remain in His presence, for His smile is everything to us. God's face, His presence, is the supply we need for us to live the Christian life and serve the Lord. Paul practiced this, he testified in 2 Corinthians 2:10 that he forgave a brother in the face of Christ. He forgave the brother in the index of the Lord's eyes. He was gazing at the Lord, looking intently into his eyes, and it was here that he was one with the Lord to forgive the brother. When you look at someone's face, at the portion around the eyes, you can see whether he is or not happy with you. A husband can tell just by looking at his wife's eyes whether she is happy or not, for the eyes express the entire being of a person. May we remain here, in the Lord's presence, looking into His eyes, and allowing Him to infuse us with Himself, so that we may do all things in His presence, enjoying Him as our everything. May we touch the triune God to enjoy Him as our real blessing. The Spirit lifts up His countenance upon us and gives us peace as we obey Him. Number 626 says, Jehovah lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace, this can be ascribed to the Spirit. There is a difference between the face of a person and His countenance. If you look at someone's face, if you have someone's face, you have the presence of that person. But if you look into his eyes, you get the expression of that person. The face denotes the presence of the person, and the countenance denotes the expression of that person. For the Spirit to lift up his countenance upon us means that he confirms us, assures us, promises us, and gives everything to us. When you look into someone's eyes and that person is happy with you, he confirms you, assures you of their affection, and promises you to be with you and give you everything you need. But if their countenance is down and they are frowning, we may not feel that comfortable. When they smile, we know they are happy, and we are also happy. PSA 42-5 mentions the salvation of His countenance, when we look at the Lord's face and see Him smiling, when the Spirit is happy with us within, we have the salvation of His countenance. Amen. When we look into the Lord's eyes in our fellowship with Him, when we see that He is happy with us, we are saved, and our countenance is also happy. PSA 42.11 speaks of the salvation of our countenance. His smile is infused into us, and when He smiles, we smile. This is not just an outward smile, but an inner happiness that we have by looking into His eyes. May we never grieve the Holy Spirit of God, Ephesians 4.30, but always obey Him by contacting Him and living according to the Spirit. Sometimes we may meet some believers who seem to enjoy the Lord in His Word and who even serve God, but their countenance is not saved, rather, they seem to be unhappy when they do this. At other times we may want to speak the gospel to others, but our countenance is not happy, for we did not deal with the things that hinder our fellowship with the Lord, and His countenance upon us is not lifted. O oh, Lord! May we learn to contact the Lord and remain in His presence so that the Spirit lifts up His countenance upon us and make us happy in Him. It is only then, when we look the Lord into the eyes, when we remain in the mingled Spirit in fellowship with Him, that our countenance is saved by His uplifted countenance. We need to have an uplifted countenance by enjoying the salvation of God's countenance, the expression of His face. 
Jesus came as the face of God, and the Holy Spirit comes as the countenance of God, however, if we grieve the Holy Spirit, His countenance will drop, and we will not be happy. But if we obey the Spirit, He will be happy with us, and He will lift up His countenance to confirm us, assure us, guarantee us, promise us, and give us everything. The Holy Spirit was dispensed into us, but we should not grieve Him. If we make the Spirit happy by obeying Him, He will lift up His countenance upon us and give us peace. We need the Lord's presence, His countenance, His smile. If we have His smile, we have everything. We want to have His uplifted countenance, and we want to be saved in our countenance by His smile. For this, we need to obey the Spirit. However, we should not be afraid of the word obey because the one who obeys the Father lives in us. His life of obedience is our life. He was obedient to the Father to the uttermost, even unto the death of the cross, Phil. 2. He lives in us. We can contact the Lord and He infuses Himself into us so that His life of obedience becomes our life and our experience. Hallelujah! Lord Jesus, we love You. We want to behold You and look into Your wonderful face. Amen. Lord, may the salvation of Your countenance become the salvation of our countenance. Keep us looking into Your eyes. Infuse us with Yourself. Expose anything that hinders our fellowship with You. We say Amen. Lord, remove anything that blocks our touch with You. O Lord, we exercise our spirit to contact You. May Your life of obedience to God fill us and be expressed through us. We do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. May Your countenance be lifted upon us to confirm us, assure us, guarantee us, promise us, and give us everything. You are our peace. You are our everything. We love You, Lord Jesus. As we touch the Triune God is our real blessing, the Father blesses us, the Son shines on us, and the Holy Spirit lifts up His countenance. Numbers 6 23-26 is the eternal blessing of the Triune God, it is not an Old Testament blessing nor is it merely a New Testament blessing, but it is the eternal blessing of the Triune God. God wants to bless His people, and His blessing is not outward or material but spiritual. In this blessing, God is not promising the children of Israel to take them into the good land, to give each one a portion of the land, or that He will keep them from famine, give them rain, protect them from their enemies, and cause them to flourish. Many Christians today think of God's blessing in terms of what God does for us and what He gives us. But the blessing seen here in Num. 6 has nothing to do with that. God's blessing is spiritual, and it is the dispensing of God Himself into our being. The blessing that God wants to give us is the triune God in His person as the Father, as the Son, and as the Spirit. The Father blesses us and keeps us, the Son shines on us and is gracious to us, and the Holy Spirit lifts up His countenance upon us and gives us peace. God wants to bless us, and the greatest blessing He gives us Himself in His divine Trinity. We just need to contact Him and remain in Him, and we are blessed with the triune God. In the Father, we receive the blessing and are kept in the triune God. In the Son, we receive God's presence and enjoy Him as grace upon grace. In the Spirit, God's countenance is lifted up upon us, and we enjoy His peace day and night. This is similar to the blessing that Paul concluded his second epistle to the Corinthians with. 2 Corinthians 13 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Grace is first because the subject of this entire epistle is grace. The grace of the Lord is the Lord Jesus Himself as life to us for our enjoyment. The love of God is God Himself as the source of the grace of the Lord. The fellowship of the Spirit is the Spirit Himself as the transmission of the grace of the Lord with the love of God for our participation and enjoyment. This blessing, the blessing of the triune God seen both in Num. 6 and 2 Corinthians 13 14, is not something outward or material. Paul didn't conclude his epistle by saying things such as, God bless you with an excellent job, a nice house, a high education, a good family life, and good position in society, and a good function in the church. Rather, he blessed the Corinthian believers with the triune God as their everything for their enjoyment. He was functioning as the priest that God desires to have in which he ordained in Noom. 6. Sometimes, when we look at our situation and check our condition, we may be disappointed, and we may feel that we don't have anything. Outwardly, we may not have a lot of things, our job may not be that great, we may not have enough money to do this or that, and we may not afford many things. It may seem that everything under the sun is vanity of vanities. Even worse, sometimes it may seem that even the spiritual things may be quite distant and intangible, impractical. Oh, Lord! What should we do when we feel this way? We should simply turn to the Triune God and contact Him. Only the Triune God is our real blessing. Everything else is vanity of vanities. 
The Triune God is our real blessing. When we contact the Triune God, the Father blesses us, the Son shines on us, and the Spirit lifts up His countenance upon us. What a blessing it is for us Christians to have God as our blessing. There's nothing that compares with us having God as our blessing, Christ as our grace, and the Spirit as our peace. We may suffer outwardly, but we can enjoy Christ as grace daily. We may lack many things and be short in many ways, but we can have His countenance being uplifted over us, and His smile as our portion. We may not be in a great condition inwardly, but we can contact the Triune God and have peace in Him, by Him, and with Him. What a blessing it is to have the Spirit's countenance smiling upon us and assuring us, confirming us, and promising us everything. Oh, the Triune God is our blessing is really what we need, and only He is the real blessing for us. May we enjoy Him to the extent that we exclaim one with the psalmist, There's nothing I desire on earth by you, and there's no one in the heavens that I have but you. Lord Jesus, we come to contact you and enjoy you as our real blessing. Oh, what a blessing it is to have the Triune God as our blessing. How blessed we are to have the face of Christ, His presence, and to enjoy Him daily as grace. What a blessing it is to have the Spirit's countenance smiling upon us, assuring us, and confirming us. Amen, Lord, we desire and we need nothing else but You, for the Triune God is our everything. You are our real blessing and portion. Keep us coming to You, contacting You, and remaining in Your presence to enjoy all that You are. Save us from desiring things that are apart from You. If we have You, Lord, we have everything, for You are our blessing. Father, bless us and keep us. Lord Jesus, shine on us and be gracious to us. Holy Spirit, may Your countenance be lifted upon us and give us peace. Amen. May the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.